Welcome everyone. It is my sincere pleasure this morning to welcome you to Emerald Mountain School's eighth grade graduation. Class of 2019, this day marks a significant moment in your personal journey where you will leave your EMS family to embark on new adventures. Before we turn our entire focus to the graduates, I would like to acknowledge all your supporters who helped you to reach this point. Grandparents, you have offered your unconditional support, and I want to thank you for joining us today in celebration of the class of 2019. Parents, you entrusted Emerald Mountain School with your children, and for that, I could not be more grateful. You have been there every step of the way as true partners in your child's educational journey. You have shown up, demonstrating what it means to fully support your child's education. You serve lunches, one family for 11 years. You chaperoned trips, you planned events, you served on the board, you served on parent council, and even just recently as yesterday, you scrubbed dirty lockers, cleaned classrooms, and moved heavy equipment, and the list could go on. We appreciate all you have given to your children and to this community. There are also a group of individuals who work tireless, tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure Emerald Mountain School is positioned for future success, our board of trustees, Thank you. And then finally, the magic that happens every day would not be possible without our exceptional teachers and dedicated staff. Your expertise, compassion, and care provide a transformative learning experience for our students. So I'd like to, I think we should just give all of those individuals a round of applause. Right, you don't get, you don't get to this moment without your tribe. And this is our tribe in here, so thank you, tribe. Members of the class of 2019, you came together this year. Embracing one another's unique qualities while establishing your collective presence as leaders within the school community. Whether pursuing deeper meaning in Plato's allegory of the cave, or helping a classmate to finish his chicken fried steak at the shack, you learn to depend on and trust one another. As a result, the faculty put their trust in you to set a strong example for the student body, which you did every day. You brought joy and laughter to halls outside my office, and I appreciated being a part of your comical banter during our Thursday outings. I was particularly touched by your eighth grade speeches in which you each expressed a common theme of gratitude for your experience at Emerald and a deep appreciation for those who have been by your side along the way. And while your reflections expressed common themes of perseverance and personal transformation, each speech was authentic, capturing your genuine qualities of which I will miss the most. Your love of Star Wars and Air Jordans, your fondness for French Bulldogs in the store window, your many injuries, which as a class you managed to collect quite a few this year, your beautiful music playing, your corny jokes that you would come grab me from my office to share with me in the hallway, and your storytelling. Robert Frost writes, home is the place where when you go there, they have to take you in. Know that even though you are leaving this home, when you return, we will always take you in. Before, before we recognize our nine-year students, we have a special farewell. We have a 25-year student to acknowledge. I've worked, al sorry. I've worked alongside many colleagues who, heading into retirement, begin to take things off their plate or slowly wind down their responsibilities. This has not been the case for Debbie Gooding. She has gracefully shepherded families through the admissions office functions, overseen the prize to your properties, organized all the admissions and fundraising events, all with grace, warmth, and compassion, and while being continuously interrupted by those who want to sit down at her desk and unload because it is Debbie, and she will listen, and she cares. All of the responsibilities I've listed above do not even begin to describe the full list of what Debbie tends to do on a daily basis. So as most people wind down, unload a few of their items from their plate, Debbie's been coming in hot to retirement. I suspect she has not had much time to reflect on her exceptional career and what she leaves behind, and I hope that when she does have some time in a few weeks maybe, 
probably that last, last day, or when she packs her bag this summer for the Adirondacks, or perhaps even during her fall travels to Europe, that she will take a moment to look back on her legacy. And I hope she takes pride, even if she won't admit it out loud, which she won't because she's humble. And more importantly, joy in the indelible mark she has left on our community, our work ethic, and our shared compassion, which will surely endure into the future. I would like to ask Debbie to come up and, and receive a gift on behalf of Emerald Mountain School. to go through the Emerald program. It only took this next group of students nine years. So next, we will honor our nine-year students. And we have quite a crew this year. These four students joined Emerald in kindergarten and chose the school as their home for the next nine years. Bridger Carlton, stand up. Sal Malone. And Avery Moyer. Thank you. You have left a lasting legacy. That's okay, you can sit down. Thank you. You have left a lasting legacy, and for those unaware of the tradition, we honor our nine-year graduates and students' commitment and families' commitment to the school by painting their names on the ceiling above the front office. So I invite you today, when we are outside celebrating and grabbing cake, to come take a look um, at their names on the ceiling where they, where they join the other nine-year graduates. Congratulations. And while I would love for you to stay for another nine years, um, I think you're more than ready for the next step in your journey. I'd like to ask Sal Malone to come up and present the class gift. So for our, not that tall, for our eighth grade gift this year, we decided to take some of the benches that were in the upstairs hallway and refurbish them. So we sanded them, we wood burned our names into them and stained them. And they will be outside in the courtyard next year for anyone who wants to enjoy their lunch out on a sunny day outside on our benches. And feel free to stand up if you can't see them. Each year the graduates offer their last will and testaments, passing down a gift of meaning to a younger student at Emerald, and we'll start with Bridger. So, a couple of years ago, I had this painting of a white paper, and I'm giving it to one of my favorite little primary kids, and to be honest, I'm a big brother who never won. <laughs> uh, the Star Wars painting to Max. Um, and they remind me of how unique they are and how each individually they shine. But I want to give a starfish to a seventh grader because she has been with me for the past three years and she has always been a great friend. Nahela, this is to you. 